limit. And we recognize the need to cooperate with other entities. In case of All of that program in our video library at cspan.org. The U.S. House gaveling in next, back from their spring recess. Short speeches first, back at five for legislative work. The work of the Congress resumes after time spent by millions of Americans celebrating high holy days, and spring comes to our nation's capital. It is a season of hope. In this chamber, where the People's House gathers, we pause to offer you gratitude for the gift of this good land on which we live, and for this great nation which you have inspired in developing over so many years. Continue to inspire the American people that through the difficulties of these days, we might keep liberty and justice alive in our nation and in our world. Give to us and all people a vivid sense of your presence that we may learn to understand each other, to respect each other, to work with each other, to live with each other, and to do good to each other. So shall we make our nation great in goodness and good in its greatness. May all that is done this day be for your greater honor and glory. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House his approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. What purposes does the gentlelady from California wish to be recognized? Mr. Speaker, pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, I demand a vote on the Speaker's approval of the journal. The question is on agreeing to the Speaker's approval of the journal. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Mr. Speaker, I request the yeas and the nays. Yeas and nays are requested. Those favoring a vote by the yeas and nays will please rise. A sufficient number having risen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question are postponed. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Burgess. Our visitors in the gallery, please join us in a pledge to our flag and our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain requests for one-minute speeches. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina rise? To address the House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the world lost a true heroine for freedom. Former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher will forever be remembered for her, her great resolve to achieve victory during the Cold War. From her humble beginnings as a grocer's daughter to her successful tenure in Parliament, Baroness Thatcher possessed great leadership qualities we can all learn from that contributed to her success. Her determination to promote and protect democracy led to the successful dissolution of the Soviet Union and the liberation of dozens of former Soviet-occupied nations from communism to free market democracy. Prime, Minister's, Prime Minister Thatcher's loyal friendships with President Ronald Reagan, Pope John Paul II, and Polish Solidarity Union leader Lech Walesa changed history, standing up for freedom against the threat of communism. Thank you, Baroness Margaret Thatcher, for your commitment to democracy. Millions around the world were touched by your unwavering strength in preserving freedom. You will be missed. In conclusion, God bless our troops and we'll never forget September 11th and the global war on terrorism. For what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee rise?
But without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Tonight, PBS and the Grammys will continue a series of concerts at the White House, and tonight's concert will feature Memphis Soul. Memphis is a city known around the world for music, whether it's Sun Records and Elvis Presley and Sam Phillips, or the studios which will be featured tonight, Stax Records and High Records. Sam Moore, Justin Timberlake, Mavis Staples, Charlie Musselwhite, Ben Harper, Sam, Sam of Moore of Sam and Dave, they'll all be there. Memphis music is part of America's cultural history and a living, breathing part of our culture. We're pleased that PBS and the Grammys chose Memphis Soul to be featured tonight, that the president will be there. Without Al Green, he'll have to do Let's Stay Together by himself. We look forward to that, and we ask all of you to come to Memphis and visit America's great reservoir of music history, Memphis, Tennessee. I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to rise, address the House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. I thank the Speaker. Today I rise to congratulate the City of Irving on the receipt of the 2012 Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. This award is the nation's highest presidential honor for performance excellence through innovation, improvement and visionary leadership. Irving, Texas is not just about lower tax rate and efficient government. The City of Irving prioritizes feedback from its residents, achieving high levels of citizen satisfaction and producing almost $45 million in cost savings over the past five years. Through the implementation of the Lean Six Sigma program, the City of Irving, Texas has lowered tax rates for its citizens, improved the quality of services and maintained an efficient workforce. I congratulate the City of Irving on its receipt of this award and I hope that the federal government in Washington, D.C. can learn from their example. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island rise? Speaker, I ask to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, today, April 9th, is Equal Pay Day, the day on the calendar that marks more than three months into 2013 when women's wages finally catch up to what men earned in 2012. Nearly a half century after the passage of the Equal Pay Act, women continue to face unfairness in the workplace. According to the American Association of University Women, in Rhode Island's first congressional district, women working full-time, year-round, still make only 83 cents on the dollar compared to the average man. For all the progress that we've made in the fight for women's rights, the issue of pay equity continues to persist. That's why I'm proud to voice my strong support for the Paycheck Fairness Act, a common sense bill that would strengthen the Equal Pay Act by providing effective remedies for women who are not paid equal wages for equal work. It's time for us to prioritize the long-term well-being of the nation's hardworking women, many of whom are heads of household, and immediately pass this critical legislation to help ensure equality in the workplace. I yield back the balance of my time. What purpose does the gentleman from North Carolina rise? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise today to honor the men and women of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, better known as the Old Guard, who for 65 years have faithfully guarded the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington National Cemetery. Saturday, April 6, was the 65th anniversary of this Honor Guard, which continuously watches over the Tomb of the Unknowns 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, through all kinds of weather. Many don't know that the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment pulls double duty, also maintaining tactical readiness prepared to defend Washington in the event of war or other crisis. The tomb, of course, holds the remains of the select unknown soldiers from World Wars I and II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. While only God knows their names, they represent men and women who died defending our freedoms. We should all be proud to live in a country that continues to honor their sacrifice, a country that doesn't forget that freedom isn't free. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to join me in thanking the soldiers of the Old Guard for their vigilance and dedication. Thank you. I yield back my time. What purpose did the gentlelady from California rise? Without objection, the gentlelady is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in recognition of Equal Pay Day. Today is a day I wish we didn't have to mark. After 99 days of 2013, women have finally caught up with what their male co-workers earned last year. And while unequal pay clearly hurts women, 
It also affects their families. The additional $11,000 a woman would make each year if she was fairly compensated would pay for a year and a half of child care or feed a family of four with money to spare. As we continue to pull out of the recession, every dollar matters. And that is why hardworking women across this nation are counting on us to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act and close this gap for good. We are listening and we must act. Our sisters, our daughters, and our granddaughters deserve nothing less. I yield back. What purpose did the gentleman from Nevada rise? I, I ask for unanimous consent to address the body for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is an important day in women's history and our country's history. It is the 50th anniversary of the Equal Pay Act, a reminder of the progress we have made in the fight for equality and a reminder that the fight is not over. Nationally, women earn 77 cents on the dollar compared to their male co-workers. In my state of Nevada, it's 85 cents to the dollar. No matter the degree of disparity, unequal pay for equal work is wrong. Women head over 125,000 households in Nevada. Closing the wage gap would provide needed and deserved income for these families and all families across the country. I'm the father of a bright young daughter. I want the best for her and for young women across the country who have great contributions to make to our nation. And that's why I urge passage of the Paycheck Fairness Act. I yield back my time. What purpose did the gentleman from Wisconsin rise? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I stand with my colleagues to highlight Equal Pay Day and call on this body to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. Equal pay for equal work not only adheres to our country's founding principles of justice and equality, but it makes a huge difference in the families of Wisconsin. In my district, women are paid 81 cents to the dollar that men earn. And across the state of Wisconsin, the number is even lower, 78 cents. That equals $10,324 less in wages a year between a man and a woman. What does $10,324 mean? Well, it means uh, almost 2,800 gallons of gas. It means more than a year's worth of groceries and almost a year's worth of rent. The pay gap, pay gap makes a uh, real effect on the families of Wisconsin. Almost 230,000 households in Wisconsin are headed by women, and almost a third of those fall below the poverty line. Eliminating the wage gap would provide much needed assistance to women whose families depend on those salaries. I am proud to co-sponsor the Paycheck, Fa Fair Paycheck Fairness Act, which makes important strides towards ensuring that m women finally receive equal pay for equal work. This bill improves the lives of Wisconsin women, Wisconsin families, and Wisconsin communities. Time we have an expired. urgent moral need to pass it. Thank you. I yield my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Maryland rise? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last year, almost 58 percent of college graduates were women, and women now account for over half of the college-educated population. In corporate America, women were 53 percent of new hires last year, and women account for 50 percent of jobs held by college-educated individuals. This is all very good news. Yet, when you look at advancement, we see another story emerging. It is estimated that when people are promoted to managers in corporations, only 37% of them are women. When promotions to vice presidents are made, only 26% are women. This is a talent drain. This is not only a big problem for women, but it's a big problem for our economy. It limits diversity of ideas, which limits productivity. The gender gap hurts U.S. competitiveness by creating management structures that don't reflect the views of 50 percent of the population. It hurts families because women are economic anchors in a majority of families. Fifty-three percent of working women are primary breadwinners, and 15 million households are headed by women. We're creating an economic burden. The gender gap and wage gap is not reflected of the kind of society we want to live in. We need to reverse both, both institutional and individuals' mindsets that limit the progress of women. Thank you. What purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? Mr. 
Speaker, I rise to uh, ask for unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the equal pay of equal payday because we are a stronger nation when our sons and daughters get equal pay for eat for an equal day of work. As a proud father of a teenage daughter, I know that children deserve to have a fair shot at success, regardless of their gender. When a woman in South Florida is paid 86 cents for every dollar paid to a man for the same job, it creates a yearly gap for women of almost $6,000. That's real money. It's nearly a year of groceries, five months of rent, 30 months of gas. And so, in this new century, with so many women serving as heads of households and women being a critical part of our economic success, it's time we close the gender pay gap once and for all and pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose did the gentleman from Georgia rise? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to address wage equality in our nation or the lack thereof. I was raised by a mother, school teacher. She worked hard. She worked harder than any male uh, that I know of on her job. And then when she came home, uh, she worked hard in the home, harder than any male that I've ever known. And um, she turned me over to my wife. My wife works harder than I ever thought about working, both outside the home and in the home. So I believe that it is definitely a great tragedy that either one of those women would, wait, would work, would make less than a man doing the same thing on the job. I think it's terrible. 77 cents for every dollar owned by a man is what women make in my home state of Georgia. I'm particularly alarmed by the wage gap for minority women who often earn less than 64 cents for every dollar earned by a non-minority man. Without equal pay, women's working, women working twice as hard only go half as far. We must continue to strive for income equality and support women in the workplace, I yield back. What purpose does the gentlelady from Connecticut rise? Without objection, the gentlelady is recognized for one minute. It has now been 50 years since Congress passed the Equal Pay Act to confront the, quote, serious and endemic problem of unequal wages in America. At the time when women were a third of the nation's workforce, President John F. Kennedy said that this would help to end, quote, the unconscionable practice of paying female employees less wages than male employees for the same job. Today, women are now half of the nation's workforce, but they are still only being paid 77 cents on the dollar as compared to men. And that is why today we are once again forced to recognize Equal Pay Day, the day in 2013 when a woman's earnings for 2012 catch up to what a man made last year. Unequal pay affects families all across our country. They're trying to pay their bills, trying to achieve the American dream, and are getting less take-home pay than they deserve for their hard work. More steps are clearly needed to ensure that women are paid what they deserve. We need to pass legislation that will end pay secrecy and give women the tools to ensure that they are being compensated fairly. We need to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. Men, women, same job, same pay. Fifty years after this Congress first the acted on the time issue, has it is time to end unequal pay, make the dubious milestone of Equal Pay Day a thing of the past. I yield back. The chair lays before the House a communication. The Honorable the Speaker, House of Representatives, Sir, pursuant to the permission granted in Clause 2H of Rule 2 of the Rules of the U.S. House of Representatives, the Clerk received the following message from the Secretary of the Senate on April 9, 2013, at 9.43 a.m., that the Senate agreed to Senate Concurrent Resolution 10. With best wishes, I am, signed sincerely, Karen L. Haas. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until approximately 5 p.m. today.
And when the House comes back at five, several measures under consideration, including one dealing with hydropower development in Utah, another on the acquisition of historical battlef battlefield sites, live at five here on C-SPAN. The Senate, meanwhile, gaveling, in, gaveling back in shortly for possible consideration of gun legislation requiring background checks for all gun sales. You can follow the Senate live at 2.15. Uh, they're underway now, as a matter of fact, on our companion app.